there. It's Susan Tekla Kuglinska. We are at the Kubrick Photography exhibit, exhibit at the Museum of the City of New York. We're sneaking in a little video. For those of you who can't make it here to New York, we will take you through and show you a bunch of highlights. Uh, here is my fellow Trending 237 uh, creative force, Joe Dater, cartoonist from The New Yorker. And uh, we are here at the beginning of the Kubrick exhibit. Lots of signs of information. Here, we're going to show you a few highlights. This is one of Kubrick's first photographs for Look Magazine. I think this is just amazing. He obviously got into Cage. And uh, he actually may have actually lived in the cage for several <laughs> weeks waiting to take this waiting photo. to get that exact yeah. moment um, from these old book magazines, a beautiful Song of the South ad. I mean, look at that along with spam. Yeah, and there's this uh, great series of photographs of this uh, couple having some sort of a conversation. And look at this woman. She's just an ordinary New York City woman. She looks like a femme fatale out of a spy movie. Why, why, don't, why don't people look like this anymore? What happened to us? Why don't we look like that? Why don't I, I don't look know, like that? Right? <laughs> that uh, the entire musical career of Tom Waits is based on these photographs alone. <laughs> uh, we, we got a whole album just from this couple. Yes. Now these were all taken when Kubrick was a teenager. Here he is at Columbia University. They gave him, a, this is just absolutely one of my favorite photographs um, of he, scientists. Mostly he took scientists, but this your music students conducting uh, music to recorded, you know, recorded music and notice that there's a woman and there's an African American, so that's very that's cool. nice to see. Yeah, this photograph, this is a rare photo of some scientists who had invented a shrinking ray, and they're actually four, <laughs> they're actually four inches tall. In this <laughs> and, and then if Stanley hadn't captured that, nobody would have known about it. I didn't even want to photograph this because it's so disturbing to me. Um, that's... This was at the Ringling Brothers Circus Camp in Florida. I a number of photographs. I love this, this monkey on roller skates. All monkeys up to about 1978 wore roller skates all the time. That's how the, their primary mode of transportation. <laughs> I suspect this one was posed. This is an amazing photograph to me because you can, you can see all so many New York City details of the Lowe's State Theater and this this forgotten movie with Rita Hayworth that nobody has seen. This in is the 50 upper years. Upper East Side, it's and I believe East I believe that theater's still there. Yeah, and she's carrying a, a sandwich board, a literal sandwich board, advertising a place that would have sold sandwiches uh, <laughs> at one twenty three East forty fifth fifty fourth Street, which uh, is probably uh, I don't know what's there now. The spread was Midsummer Night in New York City. Um, has the Stork Club. It has the Copacabana. Just showing some of the great and beginning to some of the great nightlife that was beginning to um, dwindle. Actually, they were beginning to not be as popular as they had been in previous years. And Kubrick loved animals probably more than he liked humans, like a lot of us. And uh, so here's some here's some awesome. That's a great one. Dog yeah, it's so, those dogs got pulled over shortly. <laughs> <laughs> now this woman is someone who this did not run in Look magazine. He did a very long, very uh, 700 images of this woman. He. I have a feeling you may have had a little bit of a crush on her. She looks a lot like his first and second wives. And, um, yeah, I mean, when he wants to get in a photo like that, clearly he's insinuating <laughs> himself into her life. <laughs> and like we said, he never ran, but he, uh, 
these are just, uh, you, some may remember this, this is a very famous now Kubrick photo. And this one, to me, looks like he is holding her in his arms. It's such a beautifully romantic photo. This is Peter Arno, New Yorker cartoonist. Peter Arno, the New Yorker cartoonist. He was the, one of the first New Yorker cartoonists from 1925, and he was kind of a playboy. He was back, it was back in the days when, if you were a cartoonist, you could really live it up in New York, <laughs> which you, I can tell you from experience you can no longer do. Here he is with a very practical cup of yeah. glass of wine. Well, I can tell you as a cartoonist, there's no reason to have a nude model come to your studio. It's Clearly just no, and, and he, he's literally, he had an excuse. He's literally not even holding a pencil or charcoal. But he was, as, as it says, a sophisticated cartoonist. <laughs> Here is the famous um, Walter Cartier, who ended up being the subject of one of his films. This, I think this photo is just incredible. Look at the, the faces on these. These guys look like monsters, and it's just, it's just really beautiful. <laughs> Kubrick and Rocky Graziano. And from it, we can learn that Rocky Graziano lived his entire life naked. He, uh, he, here he is in the shower. Uh, here he is uh, meeting with his accountant. And here he is having uh, breakfast with his wife and children uh, naked. He was simply nude his entire life. <laughs> and Kubrick captured that. You wouldn't have known that. That was a scoop on behalf of Kubrick. We are going to finish up with one of the first TV stars, Faye Emerson. Nobody remembers her now, but she was... She's, she's lost in history. But she, was, uh, <laughs> she was gonna be big, or she yeah, was and, big. And, uh, there she is. Yeah, and here's and here she is, uh, basically predating uh, The Shining <laughs> with uh, Kubrick, an early example of Kubrick photographing. <laughs> well, uh, an example of being someone being inappropriate with a furry mascot. Right, that's Snowcat. He was the uh, mascot of a frozen orange juice drink, and this one is for Marcus Pitt, who has a fear of mascots. <laughs>